Hello again, welcome back to um, Geograph 300, Geographical Data Analysis Video Series for WVU. This is going into more detail about one part of that process introduced in the previous video, where we're the process of going through and justifying spatial regression. And I said, the first thing we do is to run Moran's eye on the residuals. And at first, I, and in some ways it is really pretty straightforward. There is, though, a couple questions, a couple nuances that I'm going to go into here in this video. So the first one first one is something that you probably should have had a light bulb go off, or at least a question, as I'm saying, okay, you should use Moran's eye on the residuals, then thinking back to the spatial autocorrelation lab that you have done. Because you should have noticed that the residuals, or that the level of autocorrelation, and even the direction of autocorrelation, can change based upon the spatial weight matrix. So in the example that we did in the spatial autocorrelation lab, you would have um, the you would have seen most of the different spatial weights matrices giving a positive spatial autocorrelation. But in some, in one or two, there was no spatial autocorrelation. And one of them had significant negative spatial autocorrelation. So this choice of ma weights matrix is important. And so what, we're, what we would do, you would have to justify that choice. You have to be able to explain if somebody asks you, why did you pick that matrix? Why did you make that choice? For me, there may be what I would choose. For the example from the previous video of mass compliance versus COVID, recognizing COVID's nature as an infectious disease, and people may be crossing county boundaries as they live or work and shop, I would choose a coin contiguity matrix. But you may come and say, okay, most people within West Virginia commute within a certain distance, 40 kilometers say, I don't know the exact number, but we'll go with 40 kilometers, that could be a reason to pick a 40 kilometer weights matrix, or 50 kilometers, or 70, or however long you think it is. So that is another reason. It's not the one I would choose, but you can convince me that you have a sound rationale for your own choice. As long as you do that in your lab report, it's fine. But you do have to be able to justify and defend that choice in case somebody were to ask. So that's the first thing to consider with the spatial autocorrelation of the residuals. The other thing
that in a way we kind of, we were kind of expected to be if anything positive spatial order correlation but it doesn't have to and if it does find if we do find negative spatial order correlation the methods in question can actually work with that the only thing is The interpretation is easier if we have a positive spatial order correlation because that's saying okay if there's autocorrelation among the residuals and we find that it's positive then that's saying if our regression model is predicting too much COVID in mom county then that same model is going to probably predict too much COVID in Preston and Marion and Wessel counties, um, the main neighboring counties. That would be positive autocorrelation. And that kind of makes sense. If there's a higher rate here, then that could, again, with the idea of spatial lag being an infectious disease, that would spill over and cause higher rates in their neighboring counties too. But negative spatial autocorrelation is possible, theoretically, in which if Mon County is predicted to have too much COVID, so it's saying there's more, or well, predicting too much would mean there is less COVID than we actually thought there would be. The situation here is better. So in the neighboring counties, it's worse than we would expect. That positive residuals in one place mean negative residuals in its neighbors and vice versa. In some ways, it's hard to picture quite how that would come about. Um, in COVID, the best way I can think of is if somehow the location gets misclassified, especially if instead of looking at the rates for infection rates, we're looking at death rates. If the place of death is recorded as opposed to the place of residence, then places with that, especially with West Virginia, having kind of a lot of kind of smaller counties, people who have severe cases would be transported to the big hospitals. If it's recording the place of death, then Mon County with both Ruby Memorial and WB and Mind General Hospital that it would have a lot of deaths because the severe cases get transported here. But in the neighboring counties, Preston County, Taylor, um, Wetzel, especially in Marion to a certain extent, although Fairmont Hospital does was kept open for COVID. Um, people from those neighboring counties may have been transported to uh, the hospitals in Morgantown. So there would not be many deaths happening directly in those counties because their residents are getting to hospitals here and dying here instead. So a, high, a higher than expected death rate in the location of death for Mon County might correspond to a lower than expected death rate of location in the neighboring counties because they're getting transported here. That's a way that that negative autocorrelation among the residuals could occur. So as I said here, the interpretation is easier with positive, but that doesn't mean negative is impossible. And if you do find negative uh, autocorrelation among the residuals, it's worth proceeding to the next stage, whether that is spatial error or spatial lag regression, and choosing and interpreting the results from there. So those are two additional factors that go into that step or stage of running Miranda on the residuals of our OLS regression.
As always, if you have questions, feel free to ask in class or by email. And um, we'll look at spatial lag and error regression themselves in the next video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next one.